It makes a difference because you need to understand there are no bad systems out there. We say this, but that's not what we should say. There are not bad systems. They're actually just uh, uh, systems. They're not personal. Uh, the example I like to use is the Chevette. Does anybody know about this car? You ever heard of a Chevette? Yeah, the Chevette was uh, in the uh, 70s, late 70s, was kind of Chevrolet's uh, foray into economical cars. However, as first prototypes go, it didn't work out so swift. Uh, the Chevette uh, turned out to be uh, a really poorly designed car with lots of problems. I have a friend that uh, lived in Dallas at the time and he sold these things. He said, we call them Chevettes you know, on the sales staff. He said, we would go in an hour and a half early, crank all the Chevettes, let them run for an hour, hour and a half, so that when customers came to try them in the winter, they would actually crank. Now, fortunately, we have laws and people have grown up and no salespeople ever do anything like that nowadays. But back in the day, whoa. So the Chevette, look, it was not a bad system. It was a good system that consistently made a bad car. And if you think about it, it's kind of amazing. They put together a process that consistently spit out a car with the same kind of problems over and over and over again. So if I wanted that result, if I wanted a Chevette, I would have to design a system that would consistently do that. And apparently the way you do it is if you'll do poor design, poor materials, a bad process, and make sure your uh, workers are getting inebriated several nights of the week, um, that apparently helps the process. I really don't know about the workers, but you get the point. There's a process in play that actually produces a result. It's not personal, it's just a system. And once you know this, you can actually help someone improve what they're doing to get a little bit different result. It's kind of a test measure, test measure kind of game. So now we're to the...